this episode and talk about the BC basketball uh, getting smoked by Miami and playing no defense and, you know, what happened in Coral Gables. But as I sat down and I was literally putting the show together, a bombshell hit and I'm able to confirm it. John McNulty, the offensive coordinator for Boston College, is out. BC is parting ways with McNulty after a disastrous 2022 season. BC will be looking for a new offensive coordinator heading into next year. A big year for head coach Jeff Halfley. We're going to talk about what happened with McNulty, why he had to go, and everything else on today's Locked On BC. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on BC, AJ Black. I'm the editor and publisher of 247. Folks have been waiting for some coaching changes after a season when you go three and nine. It just has to come sometimes. And it hasn't up until this point. On Wednesday night, we got the news. It's footballscoop.com, a very reliable uh, coaching change um, website announced that BC was going to be parting ways with offensive coordinator John McNulty. Now, being a reporter that I am, I double-checked my sources. I reached out, and I got confirmation that McNulty is gone. Now, this is one year. McNulty lasted one year, and it was enough. <laughs> I think a lot of folks had seen enough of what McNulty could bring. BC's offense was atrocious this year. Other, You take out Zay Flowers from the picture. This offense did nothing. Rushing. Dead last in the country. Sacks allowed, second to dead last in the country. Points per game, the big, and Jeff Halfley would even say this himself, is the biggest metric he uses. They were 122nd in the country. This was coming on a year that there was expectations for this program, that many of us, myself included, thought that Boston College would be taking that next step. You had Phil Dracovic, you had Zay Flowers, Pat Garwo even had a good season and you were expecting more out of him. BC goes out, they lay a giant egg on the season. They go three and nine. With Jeff Halfley on the hot seat, something had to give. Now, me personally, I thought where they would go was Dave uh, Dave DeGuglielmo, the offensive line coach, who we still haven't heard if he's still there or not. But I, when you have a disaster on, on one side of the ball, as bad as what we just saw in 2022, you have to go to the top. You have to go to the guy whose job it was, was to organize that offense, to figure things out, to get that offense going. And that's McNulty. He's a nice enough guy, but as many BC fans will attest, nice doesn't win you games. Nice doesn't get you championships. You need to be good. And John McNulty was not good this year. So BC, again, credit to Halfley, who again, after another bad season, is pulling the trigger and not just sitting around waiting for things to change. He's trying some things. And... You know, when you look at what this offense turned into, let's talk about it. So let's look at how things have evolved. So jo Jeff, Mc Jeff McNulty, Jeff Halfley came to Boston College with Frank Signetti. And Signetti played to, uh, coached two seasons for the Eagles over the last, you know, for 2020 and 2021. He leaves to go to Pitt. All of a sudden you have this opening. Jeff Halfley, he goes for a guy that he knows a guy with NFL roots, John McNulty, John McNulty was the tight ends coach at Notre Dame. He had experience as an offensive coordinator. This wasn't a guy that was, you know, just thrown in there. He was part of a very good Rutgers offense back in the Greg Schiano days. So it wasn't like he was throwing a guy in that had no experience or was kind of the middle of the road. He had it. Plus he he's a well-renowned tight ends coach. Well, he comes in, 
He's got the 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 things in place. You've got Phil Dracovic. You've got Zay Flowers. You're looking at a quarterback that you're hoping could be near the top of the ACC, and a wide receiver should be number one or one B for Boston College. You can build an offense around that, right? Well, no, BC could not do that. BC had an offensive line, and you're the offensive coordinator, so that falls on you. That was that's get, still giving me uh, post traumatic stress disorder watching what they did. From end to beginning to end, they were just a mess, and we saw no growth out of that group. You saw little flashes here and there with guys like Trapillo and Kendall, but man, they were brutal from this first snap against Rutgers when Drew Kendall almost threw the ball into the end zone to the very end when Syracuse was killing Emmett Moorhead. In between that, there was no offensive cohesion on this program, mainly because you know, half of the game is running the ball and BC couldn't run the ball. So (laughs) you couldn't do anything. You couldn't do play action because no one expected, respected the play action. You couldn't throw the ball because your quarterback was getting killed. Your running backs couldn't do anything. So there was major issues. And, and, you know, during the season, I blamed a lot of it on the offensive line. Half of that, and Mitch and I have talked about this on this podcast. Mitch is away right now, so he can't join me. But we talked about as well that the coaching staff, yeah, when things aren't working, it's tough, but you got to figure some stuff out, man. You can't just let this go on and continue for 13, 12 weeks. You have to figure out, okay, this isn't working. What can we do to change this to get it to work? As a as a manager here, you can't just throw your hands up and go, well, we don't have an offensive line. We're screwed. And that's kind of what BC did because they didn't figure out anything. Even the year, the games that BC played well, the games where BC beat Louisville, the game they beat NC State, their quarterbacks were still getting smushed in those games. And I'll say this again. I said this before. I don't wish anyone to lose their job. I hate, I hate thinking that these guys, these, everyone's people, right? We lose facts. We lose the, the fact that these are all people that are, that have families and things like that. But to me, the moment that John McNulty lost me was the UConn game. The game that BC managed three points against the freaking UConn Huskies. That was the moment when you couldn't figure out how to get your offense in the end zone. That was the moment where BC had to make that change. And yeah, you know what? You could have fired him then. What what purpose does that do? You lose you lose recruits. You lose transfers. You you had to do it the right way. You he what you fired him if you fired him against UConn after the UConn game. You would have four weeks of like, what are you going to do now, right? So McNulty lost there. Lost me there. the The Notre Dame game wasn't much better, <laughs> but Notre Dame was much better at beat than BC. And then there, you know, the, the, he had the NC State game, but that was all on Emmett Moorhead and Zay Flowers there. That to me and, and Dino Tomlin, that wasn't like great schematics there. That was that was that was some luck. Okay, so McNulty is out in a moment. Uh, it's too early for me to give you my big board. I have to take some time. This I'm literally recording this 45, you know, half hour after I found out the news and confirmed it. It's confirmed, by the way. I've talked to people. This is not just a report anymore. In a moment, I'm going to talk about what Jeff Halfley has to do. But before I do that, I want to ask you all, if you're listening to this for the first time, if this is the first time you've checked out BC, Locked on BC on YouTube, hit the subscribe button for me right now. Like this video. Help it get, It helps in the algorithms, and it helps our podcast out. So if you like this, hit subscribe right now. You'll get all our our BC podcasts tomorrow's episode. I promise you I will have a laundry list of possible candidates because in a moment I'm going to tell you why. It's not that hard to figure out where Jeff Halfley's head kind of goes. Some, Oh, my goodness. We'll get into one comment in a minute, but we'll get into that in just a moment. But before we do that, I got to talk about our good friends over at Bet Online. If you are a if you are looking for a place to make your wages, Bet Online is the place to go. You can, it's the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college full season to basketball and World Cup. They've got it all on BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those as BetOnline as as well. And the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. 
I love heading over there with football playoffs right around the corner. It's the easiest way you can find any bet, prop bet, player bet you can think of. Your 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 imagination is the limitation there at, at Bet Online because they got everything. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. So head on over to Bet Online, where the game starts. This is locked on BC AJ Black. As I just reported in our first segment, I haven't had a chance to go live with some great news, and this is this is our chance here. BC has moved on from offensive coordinator John McNulty. And now Jeff Halfley, who is in year four of his tenure at Boston College, the shine has kind of worn off from the head coach as he is firmly planted on the coaching hot seat. This is a guy that I feel is, is either one through five in terms of the hot seat heading into next year. He's got to produce. He has to start to show some, um, some, uh, results because right now Boston College is below where they were with Steve Adazio. The, the the numbers the numbers speak for themselves. So he's got to go out there and he's got to get a new offensive coordinator. And before folks say Cliff Kingsbury, that's never going to happen in a million billion years. He's not coming here for a million different reasons. Most of all, and I'm doing the the money sign from. Um, uh, why can't I think of his name? The Texas A&M quarterback, Johnny Manziel. It, it, they're never going to pay him and he would never come here. So he, let's keep him off of the, the off the names. Uh, other names that will never happen. Mike LaFleur, who was just fired. Uh, George Wang, I love Wang. I love your th- enthusiasm. He's going to get a bigger job than BC. Um, Marty Party says the Holy Cross offensive coordinator wouldn't hate it but I think BC's probably going to go bigger than that. And then SG SJ 73 makes me want to vomit with Matt Patricia. No, 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 no. You're making me angry. SJ Matt Patricia is not going to become the next BC offensive coordinator. Um, You know, I think, I think what, what we're going to be talking about here is you got to look at the pattern of what Jeff Halfley has done. Jeff Halfley, every single coach that he has brought in has has some experience with him. Now, you can look at guys like um, um, Richie Gunnell, but he was already here, so he's kind of an outlier. But when you look at McNulty, Frank Signetti, Tem Lokabu, Dave DeGuglielmo, all of these coaches have some connection with Jeff Halfley. Then on top of that, he always goes for coaches that have pro experience. That's a selling point. You know, I cover recruiting for two, four, seven that he sells to recruits. Okay. He wants to sell that NFL connection. So that's what I'm thinking. He's going to look at now. My hope, my hope here is that he gets out of this incestuous search with guys that he just knows from Greg Schiano and some of his other coaching spots, because um, he needs, he needs to get guys fresh eyes on this, on this roster, fresh eyes that can help Emmett Moorhead, that offensive line, the, the play calling. He can't just go with guys that he's comfortable with. And, and I'm worried about that. I got to be, I got to be frank here, folks. I'm worried that's what he's going to lean into because that's what coaches do. A lot of coaches go into coaching searches and go, okay, who's a guy I know from my history that I think will fit with this because I can trust that guy. A lot of times that works. Halfley's learning that it's not (laughs) because a lot of the coaches that he knows haven't worked out for him. So he needs to go out beyond his his coaching tree beyond the guys that he's worked with with Shiano and figure out an offensive coordinator that can take that next step that can be the next big name for him but maybe can bring a fresh set of eyes because the last thing he needs to do if you're from the New England area you know the same issues that we're dealing with here for the Patriots is for things just to be incestuous. The Patriots are a complete cluster bleep right now because Bill Belichick won't hire anyone he doesn't know. 
and he can't get fresh eyes. He hired, as, as SJ just put out there, Matt Patricia, who was not even an offensive coordinator before for the Pats. They threw him in there, and the Patriots were a complete mess this year. If it wasn't Bill Belichick, they would have fired this coach. So Jeff Halfley can't – he can't afford to make that mistake. He's got to look outside, whether it's with Ryan Day. I mean, I would love to see them make more moves on the Ryan Day tree, guys that were at Ohio State. And I don't know like who they can afford. Brian Hartline, don't say him because they're never going to be able to afford him. And he's he's waiting for a big time promotion somewhere else. But like go down that road, go down. He's a well-liked guy. You know, Jeff Halfley has lots of coaching friends that he didn't coach with. You got to think of something different and what this offense needs, what it did not get out of John McNulty. And it didn't get out of Frank Signetti either is they need to get an offensive coordinator that yes, you want to go the pro style. That's what Halfley's going to go with. Don't, you don't want to be taught for folks that are going to start throwing out um, names at me. The, you know, you're not going to get an offensive coordinator that's going to go air raid. You're not going to get a guy that's going to, you're not going to want a guy that's going to completely turn your offense 180 and do something completely different. I just don't, the, the, the philosophy lives with Halfley, it, you know, whether it's right or wrong, he wants pro style. That being said, there's ways to do pro style that involve more college elements that BC desperately needs, whether that is, you know, more RPOs. Emmett Moorhead can do it. He runs like an elephant, but he can, he can still run the ball. And I think that's what BC needs. They need an, they need a guy with a bigger lens than just pro style. And I think that's what we're going to have to look at. I, my biggest, my biggest question though, is will he do it? And football fan, I know football fan loves to hold me to task. And he asks a great question. And I think it's a major one to think about heading into this year. Who would take this job with Halfley on thin ice? It's a good question. So you're not going to get a premium offensive coordinator here. A guy that is like, well, you know, maybe a, a lower program, but <clears throat> that has, <clears throat> excuse me, bigger offers or, or more opportunities coming up. But even when Adazio was going down, I felt like you had chances. I mean, Todd Fitch had a, a, a lot of success, even though, uh, he didn't with Adazio, you, you know, you could find guys that will take a chance for one year. We'll have to wait and see, but that's a, I mean, football fan. I think it's a great question. Like who will BC actually be able to, to lure in? That's a bigger question. So we'll have to wait and find that out now. You know, how do you rate John McNulty? I love to hear what you have to say. Give me your grades in the comment section. What, what grade would you give John McNulty? Because I'm, I'm curious how you guys all think about this. And now that he is gone, I think it's fair to say that this is just the, the tip of the iceberg here, folks. I don't think guys like Savon Huggins and um, Daryl Wyatt are going to go anywhere. Huggins is a good recruiter. I, he's just a first year guy. And I don't blame him for the issues of the running backs. I mean, what's he supposed to do if the running back can't move <laughs> because they're getting bared down by like three or four defenders, right? Wyatt did a good job. Their wide receivers are, are doing great. So he's not going anywhere. Obviously, the big name now is what about Dave DeGuglielmo? I believe he's going to be next. I believe he will be the next guy to go. So keep your eyes open for that one. I think he's going to be it. And Folks, if you're listening and you haven't hit subscribe yet, please hit that subscribe button. Um, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about John McNulty for a while now because this is big news. I don't think Tim Lokabu is going anywhere either, the offensive co uh, defensive coordinator. But I think this is this is gonna be some big time talks because I think it's a it's a big change for Jeff Halfley. Okay. Now, in a moment, we're gonna go to basketball, and hopefully, you all don't just run away because. <laughs> I have to, you know, this is Locked On BC. Our episodes have to be less than 30 minutes, and I still have a basketball game I still have to cover. On tomorrow's show, I promise you we will have more McNulty talk. Now, let's talk about our good friends over at Built Bar. If you know me, you know I love Built Bar. They're a delicious treat with no, with very little fat and calories, and you've got to try them. 
we just went through the holidays. And I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. And if you're like me, then you want to eat healthier too, but don't want to compromise. Then I've got the thing for you. You got to try built with built. Healthy is actually tasty. Seriously. They're so delicious. You won't think they're good for you. They're perfect for your new year's resolution. What make built bars so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in hundred percent real chocolate. That's right. Real chocolate. Now you can get your box at Sam's club. They have all sorts of uh, boxes there. You can check them out or you can have to built.com with promo, promo code lock 15. So check out built at built.com. Locked on BC here, AJ black. So we got some encouraging news. I know a lot of folks were encouraged that BC has moved on from offensive coordinator, John McNulty, but the bad news was basketball. Whew, they had a tough game out in, in Coral Gables. And for the first time all year, first time all year, I want to say it wasn't the offense's problem. It was the defense. And I almost want to say, like, there was really nothing they could do because Miami was so absurd in the amounts of shots that they hit. Like, you just had to sit back and tip your hat because they shot 67% from three-point range in a game that they won. Um, and I don't have the, the score right in front of me right now, but they won by, I think, what was it, 15, 16 points? Um, they, uh, yeah, 80, 88, 72. Sorry. They were shooting absurdly from all over the court. The Eagles, they played and they kept battling back, but Isaiah Wong and uh, their other guards, they just kept hitting shot after shot after shot after shot. And some of them were contested. Some of them were wide open. But, I mean, Miami was very, very good in this game and just showed the 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 disparity in terms of how good one team is and how uh, one team is still trying to figure things out. Now, in this game, there was a big-time positive, and that positive was guard DeMar Langford. DeMar Langford has had a tough season. Started the year off hurt. Comes back. He looks nothing like the, the DeMar Langford we saw in the ACC tournament last year. He comes out in this game. He is sh he is dunking with authority. Miami, who credit to their offense, their defense at points was pathetic. I mean, BC scored seventy two points, which should say a lot. But there were times where BC would just get into the into the the paint, and Miami just kind of just parted ways and let them do whatever they wanted. They had very little interior defense there. Demar Langford had a great game. Great game. This was great to see and, and encouraging because you need him to play better. Um, and he had like three or four emphatic dunks on, on that defense. So that was, that was impressive as well. But in the end of the day, BC loses. And um, yeah, the, 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 the score is bad. Uh, they lost by 16, but they were in this game for quite a bit. It wasn't like they were just out of this game. And down the stretch, once the game was kind of out of hand, you know, Miami continued just to hit everything they shot. So they, the score got a little bloated, but BC was in this game. It's just that Miami, every time they needed a shot, they hit it. Um, and when you're shooting 67% from three point range, you're not going to lose to anybody, <laughs> especially they were shooting him pretty regularly too. It's just every time they went up, it was like, oh my God, they hit it again. So a, a loss for BC. They return home on Saturday <coughs> to face Wake Forest. And that's going to be a good game. Students are back. So hopefully there'll be more fans there. It's an eight o'clock start. So hopefully the, the BC students will get out of the modes, the mods, stupid joke and get there. Um, and Mark Falzone always bringing me the, the stats and news of game, teams. I don't follow enough it says Abigail Levy named to national women's goalie of the year. Watch list. She's the goalie for the women's uh, hockey team. Congratulations to her. That's good. That's great news to hear. This is AJ Black. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to give you the offensive board uh, coordinator, uh, big board, some some names to watch. And we'll get into all of that in any more news that breaks between now and then. Follow me on Twitter at AJ Black underscore BC um, and on Locked On BC. And hit that subscribe button right now if you have not done so. Thank you all so much. This has been an interesting episode, one I didn't expect I'd be doing. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see you all again soon. Take care.